Hello. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Okay. Uh, buen après-midi, buenas tardes a todas y a todos. Uh, bienvenidas y bienvenidos a la Universidad de Barcelona. Welcome, welcome to UB, welcome University to of Barcelona. University. Here for the opener of this uh, conference, uh, I'll give you the, the floor to Dr. Montserrat Puig, uh, Vice President of this University. Thank you and welcome and thanks to be here with us. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Buena tarde, buenas tardes. First of all, I would like to thank the European Network and the European Observatory on Memories, EUROM, of the UB Foundation. Thanks for having chosen Barcelona and the UB to host your symposiums that have been taking place successfully here in Barcelona. It is a source of proud as the Deputy President for Equality and Gender to chair this international gathering here at home at the University of Barcelona. I would like to thank all the participants for your attendance, more especially those of you coming from abroad. Thanks for coming all the way to Barcelona. Thanks for being here. I am sure you're going to be enjoying three fruitful days. The two organizing entities have decided to organize these sessions around two main topics, solidarity and resistance. The foundation, chaired by Xavier Lopez, has a solidarity-based commitment with societies suffering war. And an example of the previous is the program that aims at supporting refugees from Syria and other parts of the world, such as the Ukraine in the present. Of course, solidarity-based engagement is one of the pillars of UB, and so is memory, remembrance, resistance, with the European Observatory, chaired by Dr. Guichet, we have carried out an important task, which is remembering that democracy cannot, give, cannot be given for granted. For example, in our country here in Spain, we had to resist and struggle against the Franco dictatorship in order to enjoy the freedoms and rights that we enjoy today. today we can and we must celebrate our Europeanism. This symposium is the result of our willingness of working together, the European, Western European and Eastern European networks. I believe today is a very timely day, 9th of May, the day of Europe. 73 years ago, the French Minister of Foreign Affairs, Schumann, pronounced the declaration that put forward the European community of cool and which is the president of the European Union. And one of the paragraphs reads, Europe will not happen from one day to the next. Europe will be possible thanks to specific realizations that put forward solidarity, de facto solidarity. Solidarity is one of the pillars of the European Union. So this joint task by Euroman Rems, chaired by Rafael Robonsky, who is with us today, is a proof of the previous, this collaboration between East and West to share different historic realities to debate essential matters such as solidarity and resistance in different countries, to debate essential topics such as solidarity and resistance in different countries like Spain, Poland, and other countries representative represented here. In difficult times like the ones we experience today, in which not only the European project has an opposition, but also democracy, it is important to celebrate symposiums like the one that we inaugurate here today with a deep reflection about how we got here and how we can better understand the tools 
to build a better future. Be welcome to the University of Barcelona, which is the home of knowledge, debate, research, and discussion. I hope that today's seminar are a living example of the previous. Thank you very much once again for your attendance. Thank you, Dr. Puch. Uh, I would like to echo uh, Dr. Puch's remarks, Deputy President of UB. It is an honor and a pleasure from the European Observatory on Memories. Well, this afternoon, I mean, we have been part of this project for more than 10 years, as well as an RS when we met in 2013, 2014, we thought that we would have a long-term collaboration, a win-win scenario with different trans-European networks, 50 partners in more than 20 countries from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west of Europe with different experiences, local experiences, but also at the global level and at an international level. So we would like to congratulate ourselves. Last year, we celebrated the taking the stock and the yearly symposium, and we engaged with Mr. Rudolski last year with Constance also from the European Home of History. Welcome. So we decided to choose a very global topic last year. We focused on digital networks. Let's remember, dear colleagues from the different from different parts of Spain and different autonomous regions and universities. It is important to understand and to remember that quite recently the new bill on democratic memory was passed here in Spain only quite recently. And in the Catalan Parliament, beyond certain amendments presented by civil society organizations, we are now in the process of approving a bill, a Catalan bill, to improve the bill from 2007 and the bill from 2007, the Spanish bill on democratic memory. Because at the end of the day, democratic memory urges democratic society to rethink reality. This is what history is about and what historian's task is about, right? Now, it's all about sharing here in the present many of the atrocities and crimes from the past so that society grows in terms of knowledge, even if, as I said before, the complexity of violence, war, and contemporary societies remind us that we never learn enough from history. We are surrounded by historians from all around Europe, and I am sure we're going to be digging into this debate. These days we'll speak about history, of course, but also about memory, and we'll have visits to memory spaces like the Modelo Jail here in Barcelona. Last year we already celebrated the session there with a team of NRS. We decided to celebrate this gathering here and we did so with the hope that the networking, not only with our partners but also at an international level, I am sure that this is the most fruitful part of this symposium. I am sure that other countries and other member states should learn how to better network. And this is why I am very proud to be here with you. And that's why I welcome you here. And I would like to thank you, B, for hosting us. I still remember one of the projects in which we participated a project led by the NRS, a trans-border project with different editions about youth. We participated in the 2016 meeting, and we knew that the relationship between networks would be extremely fruitful. We're not alone. The UB supports us, and since 2012, 
We are very well hosted within the Foundation for Solidarity of UB. The concept of the Solidarity Foundation and the Cooperation Foundation are also in the DNA of this year's session, Resistance and Solidarity, which is more timely and needed than ever. I don't want to forget any important item. I would like to thank the interpreters. I'm going to switch into Catalan now. Thanks to the interpreters for their work, as well as the technicians and the rest of the team. In a very emblematic day like today, let me remember, let me remind you that we chose these dates. Even if this week is a quite busy week in the field of European memory and the day of Europe, we decided to choose these dates. An example of what I mentioned can be seen in the whole of this university. There is an exhibition about women founders of the European Union. The deputy president before mentioned Robert Schumann, and sometimes we forget about women, even if women are, I mean, they have been very important women in the process of building the European Union, but they go unnoticed, they go invisibilized, and this is why we have organized this exhibition in partnership with the Office for the European Commission. I hope I'm not missing any important item. I would like to acknowledge the team of the uh, NRS. Thank you very much, Rafael, and thank you very much, Maria, Lika, Alexandra, Antonia, and all the NRS team, Magdalena, Ursula, our team from the observatory. As the director of the ob observatory, Ricard, Conesa, Pao, Fernanda, and I hope I'm not leaving anyone behind, Andrea Angels. And as I said before, I would like to thank Silvia Pala for her work and for her effort. I would like to conclude by thinking about resistance and solidarity. And I would like to conclude by sharing a message. It was not necessarily the European Union, but back in 1971, in the headquarters of the United Nations, someone who has been an MP, Maria Badia, and who today chairs the Pau Casals Foundation, an international foundation, with a new mandate with the president of Maria. Well, in collaboration with this foundation, we have signed a manifesto. By the way, there will be a celebration in the headquarters of the Pau Andrel Solidarity in favor of Europe. Pau Casals, who never came back from exile from France because here there was a dictatorship, the Franco dictatorship, and he said, while, while there's no freedom in Spain, I will never be back. But he was invited to the prayer session of the United Nations in 1971, and beyond Echoing this manifesto, I would like to remember Pau Casals' remarks and not mine. Pau Casals is today more timely than ever. He said in 1971 something which is still valid today. He said that the most powerful nations have the duty and the responsibility to preserve peace. I trust that societies desire the understanding and the cooperation between men and women. It's about time that the governments and those who hold power start working so that this desire does not become impossible. He said so in New York back in 1971. Thank you very much for your assistance, and I am sure that this colloque, this symposium would, will be fruitful and thought-provoking. Thank you very much. And now I would like to hand it over to Madam Ana Gallego Torres. By the way, I would like to once again thank her for her online participation. Unfortunately, she can't join us. We invited her to attend the session, but unfortunately, she could not attend the session physically, so she will address us through a video. She's the DG for Justice of the European Commission, where new programs, new programs on citizenship, equality, 
are, let's say, hosted, and the remembrance programs also depend on the DG for justice of the European Union, so they are our partners. Once again, thank you very much, and let's share the... Buenos dias desde Bruselas. It is an honor for me to address this audience today, and I am grateful for being able to do it at least virtually, as the Council of Justice Ministers is taking place right now. Each year at this event, the European Network for Remembrance and Solidarity, and this time together with the European Observatory on Memories, reminds us of why memory matters. I find this an important moment to reflect on what our duty is, and in my case what the duty of the European Union is, in understanding and preserving memory, including of past and contemporary conflicts. Just over a year ago, the idea of conflict became more real to all of us, in the European Union, when in February 2022, Russia embarked on its unjustified war of aggression in Ukraine. We are seeing many attempts by Russia to distort history, and we must push back with evidence-based research and remembrance, which we support in the European Remembrance Funding Strand. In 2019, President Sanchez gave a memorable line, La España actual es fruto del perdón, pero no puede ser producto del olvido. Modern Spain is the result of forgiveness, but it can't be the result of oblivion. This encapsulates the duality of collective memory. A nation cannot forget its past, no matter how complicated or difficult the past might be. This year, your event is dedicated to solidarity and resistance topic. Solidarity is crucial in preserving a nation's memory, and this is why the European Commission has been a long-time supporter of this process in Member States. We have supported the Council of Europe's Observatory on History Teaching in Europe with over 1 million euro. Today we are increasing our funding for projects on European remembrance this year after tripling it the year before. There are 10 million euro available now and I strongly encourage applications. Let me remind you that the deadline is the 5th of July. With regards to resistance, there is one area which requires specific attention namely the rising challenges to democracy and historical distortion. Regardless of political views, we must all resist against this. Memory can never be a substitute for truth. I hope the Commission will be able to fund projects also on this topic. In July, Spain will take over the presidency of the European Union Council, and I believe there is a lot to be learned from their experience of memory, preservation and fighting historical distortion, for example from Spain's work on the new Ley de Memoria Democrática. To come back to President Sánchez's words, like modern Spain, the European Union is also a product of forgiveness. Like modern Spain, we cannot become a product of oblivion either. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> Rafael, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jordi. Uh, Mrs. Vice President, Mr. Director, Dil Jordi, uh, members of Diplomatic Corps, uh, dear ENRS assemblies, um, members, ladies and gentlemen. It is always good to be in Barcelona, especially in May, uh, and especially in such beautiful place like university. Thank you for this possibility to be here. Uh, <laughs> I will start with some reflections about the title of today's, this year's symposium, and then we'll continue with some thanks words and short introduction to the, uh, to the next point of our, and main point of our today's meeting, uh, the discussion which will take place afterwards. Solidarity means bound. This is the shortest possible definition of the word solidarity. It derives from the Latin solidus, strong, durable, in relation to a person, reliable and trustworthy. First, somewhere in the 17th century, it functioned and still functions in the legal and financial world in relation to joint responsibility for any kind of obligation. Then, 
in the 19th century, the term solidarity began to be used in social and political discourse to emphasize the importance of bonds in opposition to conflict. And so it is to this day. Solidarity means bond is also the title of an excellent essay by Professor Zbigniew Stawrowski, an outstanding Polish philosopher closely associated with the Polish opposition social movement of the 1980s, the movement which took the name Solidarity. Solidarity quickly became a symbol for the whole world, a symbol of resistance to communist oppression, a last, at least successful, often and by many perceived in terms of a miracle. Resistance is also a multidimensional concept, but unlike solidarity, it has a negative connotation as well. Resistance, both in physics and in social sciences, is always associated with um, objection to the impact of some kind of force. For example, power on society or on a single person. Resistance to totalitarian and authoritarian power is not only a manifestation of the will to fight for freedom, the will to fight with oppression. Such kind of resistance is also, and perhaps above all, a manifestation of solidarity with those who are subjected to oppression. Both words have a historical dimension, but they also refer to the reality of here and now and to our and our children's future. And this reference in the context of Russia's attack on Ukraine, in the context of social and political changes in Europe and beyond, as well as in the context of climate changes, is of particular importance for all of us. That is why, together with European Observatory of Memories and the Solidarity Foundation of the University of Barcelona, the ENRS have created the program uh, of this year's meeting around these two words, resistance and solidarity. Ladies and gentlemen, we have invited you to talk about various manifestations of solidarity and resistance, also in order to think together about how to present these notions through the projects we organize, how to talk about them so that the participants of the recipi or uh, the recipients of our initiatives can learn as much as possible from the beautiful heritage of solidarity and from the history of resistance to oppression. For the first time in a long history of the NRS Symposia, we are organizing the event in a joint form with another meeting, taking stock of European memory policies. Together with European Observatory of Memories and the Solidarity Foundation of the University of Barcelona, we want to underline that open dialogue of the history of the last century is necessary not only to present different points of view, but especially to better understand the present and to protect ourselves from disinformation and manipulation. It is and it should be the process which never ends. We need to take into account different experiences, various sensitivities and existing interpretations. We also need meaningful international cooperation and joint projects and I hope this three days meeting which we are about to start will be a fruitful and inspiring event exactly for the above mentioned reasons. Therefore, I would like to express my gratitude to Jordi Guichet and his team, Andrea Carrera Bruges, Fernanda Zanuzzi, Oriol Lopez and Ricard Conessa for all the work that has been 
put into our initiative, our common initiative. Uh, also, I would like to thank the ENRS team, including, first of all, Maria Naimska, who was a coordinator of the, this year's symposium and some other symposiums in last years, and Aleksandra Kalinowska, Alika Świderska, Joanna Orłoś, Agnieszka Mazur-Olczak, Magdalena Żelazowska, Iwona Szelewa, Gabor Dani, Marek Dąbkowski, and all other engaged for commitment, for your commitment and for dedication. I would also like to say thank you to other partners of this event, University of Barcelona, General Consulate of the Republic of Poland, uh, Honorary Consulate of the Czech Republic in Barcelona, and Nations Memory Institute in Slovakia. I'm also grateful for the ongoing financial support from the governments of the ENRS member countries, Poland, Germany, Romania, Slovakia, and Hungary. Without this input, our meeting wouldn't be possible. The financial uh, support of the ENRS activities, including this annual meeting, has also been given by the European Union under SERF program, so Citizens Equality Rights and Values program. Last but not least, my thank you goes to Barcelona City Council for their support. Ladies and gentlemen, dear participants of the 11th European Remembrance Symposium and the sixth edition of Taking Stock of European Memory Policies. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for coming to Barcelona. And now, at the end, I would uh, let me invite you to the first discussion of today. I'm very much looking forward to listening to those who were able to and who knew how to turn their experience from the 70s and 80s of the previous century into the work on the development of democratic societies. Carmen Magalon has been involved in the peace movement since the 80s. Piotr Naimski was one of the founders of the Workers' Defense Committee established in Poland in 1976. He, has, he was then active member of the Solidarność movement and after the fall of communism in Poland, an important governmental, government official. Michael Jantowski, who as a chair will for sure say more about both participants of the discussion, was active during the Velvet Revolution and later become advisor and spokesman to Václav Havel, the first president of the independent Czech Republic, first Czechoslovakia and then Czech Republic. He is a former Czech ambassador to the United States, Israel and United Kingdom, as well as a former senator of the Czech parliament. All the three participants of this discussion has proven in their lives that solidarity and resistance can be treated as guidelines in the times of conflict and instability, not only on moral grounds, but also, if needed, in connection to political and economic activities. Distinguished speakers, it is an honor for us to have all of you today. Uh, and the floor is yours. Thank you. So to close this opening ceremony, we welcome the first panel. I officially open this symposium. Thank you very much.